Hi everybody, so um, today we are going to read chapter two of our front desk book and also while you're reading chapter two, just a reminder, you're going to be taking your sketch notes, all right? Chapter two. The Calavista Motel sat on the corner of Coast Boulevard and Meadow Lane. It was a small motel, the first of three motels in a row. The Topaz Inn and the Lagoon Motel were right next door and bigger, but I immediately decided I liked our little motel the best. With its creamy walls and red doors, it looked warm and inviting. I looked up at the sign and read the words, low rates. Cable TV, Disneyland, just five miles away. Excitedly, I asked my parents if that meant we could visit and go on all the rides. We probably could, my mom said. I smiled, savoring the moment. Our lives were about to change. We were going to become Disneyland going people. As if things couldn't get any better, the Calavista had a pool. It was right out in front. The water sparkled under the golden sun. I closed my eyes and pictured myself doing cannonballs in the water all summer long. This was going to be amazing. Just behind the pool was the front office. I'd asked my parents in the car whether I could help out at the front desk, and my dad had chuckled and said, we'll see. Mr. Yao was waiting for us in the front office. He buzzed us in and lifted the divider so we could all get behind the front desk. The front desk was a long wooden desk that stretched out almost the entire width of the room. Just behind the front office were the manager's quarters where Mr. Ao led us next. There was a living room with a bed in it. He pointed to the bed. You guys sleep here. He said to my parents, so you can hear the customers in the middle of the night. Customers come in in the middle of the night? My dad asked. Mr. Yao nodded, of course, it's a motel. But won't that wake them up, I asked. Mr. Yao rolled his eyes. That's the point, he said. Next, he led us over to the small bedroom, just to the right of the living room and the kitchen. The girl can sleep here, Mr. Yao said. For some reason, he still kept calling me the girl, even though I had already told him my name several times. I put myself down in the small bedroom, then joined my parents and Mr. Yao in the front office. Mr. Yao was explaining the buzzer. One wrong buzz and it's all over, he said. See that glass? He pointed to the thick glass enclosing the front office. That's bulletproof glass. You see a bad guy come up? You don't need to worry. They can't hurt you. But if you press this buzzer, he put his fingers on the buzzer just under the front desk and a loud buzz roared. That door right there gets unlocked, Mr. Yao said. And then what? I asked him. Then he's inside, Mr. Yao said. I looked around to see if there were any other magical buttons or bulletproof glass inside the office. There weren't. I asked Mr. Yao how we could tell if somebody was a bad guy. Based on how they look, of course, he said, which made me wonder, because it's not like all bad people walk around with a sticker on their head saying, I'm bad. The bottom line is, don't let in any bad guys, Mr. Yao warned. His pupils expanded as he said the word bad. While Mr. Yao took my parents out back to show them the laundry room and cleaning supplies, I stayed in the front office. I climbed up on top of the front desk stool Gently, I reached down and touched the buzzer with my finger. It was greasy, like it had been pressed hundreds of times. Slowly, I pressed on it and heard it zap. I pressed it again. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Power coursed through my fingertips. I closed my eyes and pictured myself checking customers in. Why, yes, Mr. Conley. I'll be happy to show you to your room. Right this way, I'd say. Certainly, I can help you with your luggage. It would be my pleasure. So deep was I in my fake customer relations that I almost didn't hear it when a real customer walked up and tapped on the front of the glass. I looked up to see a thin African-American man, about 50 or so years old, smiling and waving at me. He motioned with his hand for me to come 
buzz him in. Oh, right, I said, then pressed on the buzzer. Buzz. He pushed open the door and walked in. Just saw Mr. Yale on the lot. You must be the new managers, he said. He extended his hand across the front desk. Name's Hank. I smiled, took his hand, and shook it. I'm Mia. Nice to meet you. He tilted his head to one side. How old are you, Mia? I'm ten, I told him. Say, aren't you a little young to be running this place? He teased me. I laughed. I liked Hank immediately. I'm helping my parents, I told him. What about you? Do you live here? Sure do, he said, and pointed to one of the rooms. That's me, right there, number 12. Hank informed me that he wasn't a regular customer, the kind who stays just one or two days. He was a weekly customer. A weekly is somebody who pays by the week. There were five of them at the Calavista. They were Mrs. Q, Mrs. T, Hank, Billy Bob, and Fred. You'll meet them, he said. They're all nice people. I smiled. Do you guys like living here, I asked. Oh, yeah, he said. Well, except for Mr. Yao. Everyone hates Mr. Yao. Really, I asked him. He seems all right. Intense, but all right. Hank snorted. Trust me, he's anything but all right. Before I could ask Hank what he meant by that, the back door creaked open, and my parents and Mr. Yao came back in. When I turned around, Hank was gone. Chapter 3